I want to show you how to throw a lidded jar with a flange lid. So right now I'm creating the jar form. And for this jar form, I'm going to alter it with a little bit of a spiral. So I'm going to lower my camera so that you can see the form a little bit better that I'm throwing right now. Hopefully this angle will be a little bit better. So to get that clay up from the very bottom, I want to kind of glide the sponge against the bat. I'm going to move, remove any excess clay and then push in any clay that is laying against the bat to push it up into the wall. So I want to keep these, this form choked in. So I'm going to go ahead and move these walls in so it doesn't flare out too much. And then if it flares too much, when you go to choke it back in, it kind of crinkles. And I don't want that. So I want to again um, focus on moving that clay up that's at the base. I really like thin, even walls on the form, especially when I'm going to spiral the clay. It makes a really nice spiral. So now I'm about ready to spiral the form. My walls are thin enough. I'm not crazy about this shape. I think it's a little awkward how it um, chokes in. So I'm gonna get my hand down in there with the rib on the outside to get that bottom wall angled out a little bit more. Now I feel a little bit more ready to spiral. You see what that rim's like. The rim's even, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna slow my wheel down and I'm going to do a slow pull up the form. That will result in a spiral. And now I want to take my calipers and measure, and I'm going to measure the outside edge of the jar. I want to show you what my rim looks like right now. My rim is rounded. I do not have a ledge on there, so you can kind of see the rim it is very rounded. If you have to remove a, a ring of clay and that leads to then like a really flat, harsh, edge you can use a little piece of paper towel or I have a little chamois that you just round that rim okay so now I'm going to take my calipers I'm going to measure the outside edge of that jar there's my measurement so I now know the flange needs to go inside and then there is an area of the lid that dangles on the outside. So this is the outside measurement. And then after I make note of the outside measurement, I'm also going to make note of that inside measurement because that's going to be where the flange, the size the flange needs to be. Now I'm ready to throw the lid part of the jar. So I've already started with a centered piece of clay that I kind of flattened and do a very thick hockey puck is usually how I describe it um, to my students. And the area that the rim of the pot is going to hit is going to fall right in here. This is what potters refer to as the flange. I'll be pulling this up to get a little bit more height. I'll also be curving this around a little bit more with a pull so that in the end, this lid will fit on top of this jar. 
I will be trimming it and then throwing a knob onto the top. So I'm going to be going back and forth between the jar and the lid to really check measurements so that I'm sure that lid is going to fit. So I'm going to continue with my throwing process. I want to push down in the center a little bit further so I have less trim work later. This is going to be the flange section. So I'm going to start to pull up the flange. And this is the outside edge is going to curve over the jar. So now it's time to start checking measurements. I'm going to start with the inside of the jar measurement. So what I'm referring to is the measurement from one inside edge to the other inside edge. That looks about right. So that is how wide the flange needs to be. So I still need to pull my wall out a little bit more and I've got plenty of space to do that. If your flange is too wide, then it's going to wiggle quite a bit after you get it onto the jar and we don't want that. The whole purpose of having that flange and that outside rim is to hold the lid in place. Let's check again. That is much better. That's right where I like to see it. And it actually looks like that outside edge is going to be pretty good as well. I might bring this in a little bit more. The let's make an official measurement. I'm now going to measure the outside of the jar. That's where the outside is going to hit. That actually looks really good. So I now have a flange lid that I will trim up later and throw a knob on for my jar. Next, I wanna show you how to trim a flange lid. So this lid is leather hard. It is ready to be trimmed in the round and a knob thrown on the bottom of it. Well, which will of course turn into the top of it. So I of course am trimming off of a bat and I'm going to go ahead and line this lid up with the rings on the wheel head as best as I can. And now I'm going to center just as I would a regular pot. So I'm going to create the lines on the bottom. It's wider over here, a little thinner over there. We're basically centered though. It's not far off. tiny bit wider over there. So move it just a tiny bit. And I think we're going to be centered now. Yep, we're good to go. So whenever I'm bracing down, I really want to make sure that I'm keeping that clay really low away from the area that I'm trimming because I want to trim this lid in the round. So in other words, there's no foot. The edges are going to round, and then I'm going to be able to throw the knob on top. So I wanna do a little wiggle test to make sure that I'm secure first, and let's go ahead and get trimming. When I hit that outside edge, I really wanna make sure that I'm focusing on rounding the lid. Remember, this is a lid, not a foot ring. So right now that's looking pretty good. I wanna make sure I don't have any awkward edges that would become distracting when the lid is on the form. I want the lid to visually relate to the jar. However, I'm not going to sp put a spiral on this lid. I'm go I want a degree of contrast I hope to spiral the knob. So I have an odd little ridge kind of on this outside edge that I still need to get rid of. The clay is slightly in the way. 
just push it down away, push it away. There we go. Wonderful. All right. So now I have rounded the edge. Clean up this inside a little bit. Do not lay your tool completely flat. I know it may look like the tool's flat, but it's not. You can tell it's not flat based on the trimmings that are coming off of the loop tool right now. Okay. So I'm going to smooth this surface a bit with a damp sponge. Do not oversaturate it. You do not want water to run down the sides and get stuck in the clay. So now I'm going to cross hatch. This is going to become the knob. Start with a ball of clay larger than you think you need. You can always cut some clay off. It's a lot more challenging to add more clay. It's easier to take it away. So I dip that ball of clay in water. That's the slip. I'm just going to press this on. Now it's gonna be kind of like centering a little mini pot on here. We do not want a ton of water running down the form or the clay that's bracing the lid on will stick. So use as little water as possible. Take your time to center, clean up this excess water so it does not run down the form. Get a nice centered knob. So basically with my fingers, I'm coning up and pushing down just as I would if I were centering a larger ball of clay. So this top part's centered. I still have this bottom edge that's a little sloppy. So I'm just gonna hold my finger really stiff Lock it in position and center that base. Remember when you're creating a knob, you really want to have basically like a mushroom stem, something to grasp. I'm wanting this knob shape to kind of mimic the shape of my jar. Around that top area. So I'm going to smooth it out and then I want to create a little spiral so that it relates to the jar. So now I have a basic knob. Go in with a finger and just create a spiral. Recenter it. So now I have a little knob that will relate to my overall form. So I want to show you my finished lidded jar with a flange. So this is the complete jar and you can see that it has a flange. I cannot yet touch that knob because it's too wet. When you are storing your jar, you want to make sure the lid is off of the jar just in case the shrinkage rates of the lid in the jar slightly differ. You do not want a lid stuck on the form. So as they're stiffening, keep them side by side on your shelf.